Hey, there we are. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is Thursday, July 11th, 2019, and we're going to write a little bit of code today. Hey, CLW is here. Greetings back in Pennsylvania. Glad to see that. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. I'm looking at, down the chat room. Who's here? Um, I see Copper Beardy. Thank you, Copper Beardy, and I appreciate... The latest subscription over there, Copper Beardy click through right as we got started here. Thanks so much. And uh, who just followed there? Um, thanks so much, everybody, for joining us. We And I want to make sure that this is always a positive, welcoming community. And uh, that type of behavior just will not be tolerated. Um, so, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I wanted to say hello to Hugo's here. Code man codes. Uh, hey, you got your uh, you got your account back. That's terrific. Hugo, I mentioned. Okay, uh, Sean's here. Absolutely. Coding gorilla. Yeah, the bots. It's. Uh, I, I don't know why they think that this is something interesting. Yes, I was a guest on the .NET Core podcast. Um, is that W Sir ninety five? Thanks so much for the subscription, John. I really appreciate that. And we'll make a donation to Coder Dojo. Thanks so much for that. Um, Jezarian, good to see you. Hey, Cecil Phillip, you like you like the blazer hat? We're going blazer today. We're doing a lot with... Um, we're going to be doing some more with Razor components today. It's going to be... That's going to be fun. We're going to continue to dig down and learn more about how this works. Um, even though we are... We are constrained to preview five because of the changes to Entity Framework. Um, let's see here. Namazri, good to see you. Yes, we are going to be blazing some blazer trails. That's right, Hugo. So um, I think we're all right for now. I'm going to tuck this off to the side here in case I need to change anything. Um, squ uh, <laughs> Squido, welcome. Yes, I'm. Uh, we're glad you made it. Always happy to welcome new folks here to to the community and write some codes get together. You sent a tweet out trying to get more people to come follow. Well, thank you so much for that, Copper Beardy. Yeah, so we are pushing towards eight thousand followers. We're at sixty eight oh eight right now. Sixty eight oh nine is what it shows over here on another screen that I have. Um, if we get that number to eight thousand before September fifteenth, I will dye my beard rainbow for both. Uh, .NET Conf and TwitchCon. They're the same week in September. Um, I hope you turn up for both of them. Uh, .NET Conf is still taking submissions. If you're interested in speaking, you can submit to the call for papers. Uh, check it out at .NET Conf .com. Really great stuff there. Look at the rainbows from Corey Hurricane Weathers. Thanks so much for the rainbows. Um, so that's going to be coming up. Tomorrow, we're going to do our ASP.NET Core workshop. This is a workshop that you may have seen we give at, at several big events. Um, over the summer, we update the workshop for the next version. So we're going to do the 2.2 version of the workshop live here tomorrow, all day long. You'll be able to ask questions. I'll leave plenty of time for folks to follow along. And um, I'm thinking we're going to use Linux to build some ASP.NET Core tomorrow along with Visual Studio Code. I hope you join me. It's going to be a full day of coding. We'll have a lot of fun together. The same hijinks and, and fun and sound effects that we normally have. I hope you hope you tune in for a little bit. Whether you're an expert at ASP.NET and C Sharp or you're not, that's okay. Um, tune in and we'll have some fun. I think it'll be more than just a learning experience, but also a good time together. There's a couple of questions coming through here um, that I want to make sure I, I touch. Um, Jazarian, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. How many screens? I'm running three screens right now on this machine. I've got the main screen in front of me that you're going to see in a minute that I develop on. I've got a screen to my right here where I have OBS and uh, the console for the Twitch bot. And on my left here, I have uh, the Twitch uh, console for broadcasters. And I've also got the chat room so that it looks like I'm looking at the chat room when I'm looking at the chat room. So it kind of works out like that. Eight hours at least tomorrow, Namazri. Yes, it's going to be a big big day. Four, I, I was doing four for a while and it just felt like a little much. Three feels right to me because I'm just turning back and forth. Hey, I am not myself. Good to see you. So let me get some music going here. I want to answer some of the other questions that folks have asked here in the chat room and uh, 
get back into our project, get back into our code here. This is a song called Indigo. This is from Carl Franklin's Music to Code By. It's designed to get you in the flow, to get you in the groove, so that whatever task it is that you're working on, those other things that you might you might have been focused on, kind of fade away, and you can uh, you can get the task. Have a good time. Uh, whether you're writing code, doing homework, doing the dishes, chores around the house, yard work, check it out, mtcb.pwop.com. Thanks so much, uh, Carl. We really appreciate listening to your music, music live on stream. Check it out, friends. Frank, thanks so much for the resub. Just resubscribed for eight months. Time to chill. Absolutely. We're going to chill together. We're going to have a really good time. Thank you very, very much for that. Let me see. I think our... I think some of our... Uh, trolls have left here now. No, we're still all right. We're, we're going to need to wait a little bit before I turn back on some of those other things. Um, that's a shame. I, I'm not a fan of folks that do that and think they're being funny um, because it's not it's absolutely not something that we want to encourage so uh, yeah there's, there's one thing to be playful trolls but folks who are insulting um, and going after um, going after groups and and not um Yeah, it, it's not something that that we're gonna have here. I seem to be very be very stoic. I've I've dealt with uh, plenty of trolls in my time, and that's quite all right. Not a problem to deal with. Um, all right, I'm wearing my so I've got my blazer hat on. This is the logo for the blazer framework. Um, and blazer, as you may or may not know, of course, is that technology that folks use. Um, to to build with C sharp and HTML and CSS to make visual components that can run either on the server, get rendered and sent down to the client very quickly using socket uh, WebSocket technology, and it also steps down to a couple others. But it uses actually an abstraction above that called Signal R. Or you can build and, and deploy client side using a technology called WebAssembly. WebAssembly will run that code natively in the browser. So it'll actually deploy DLLs to browsers. And that doesn't just work in Microsoft Edge. No, no, no. It works in all the major browsers because it's part of the HTML standard. Every browser supports it, whether it's Firefox, Chrome, Chromium, Safari, all the Android browser, uh, Opera. They all support the technology. So you can get it working everywhere. Um, I've got a Discord PM I need to check into. What's going on? Uh, seeing some, um, some artifacting. Nah, I think we're okay. I think we're all right. Um, uh, thanks for the heads up there. All right. I have, wow. Okay. Let's head over to the code and to to the, the code screen here, and I'll answer some of the questions that we have. We're working on this resource management project here, and it uses Razor components on the server side. We'll eventually build some to work on the client side as well, but the server side uh, Blazor technology is what you can use that'll be supported out of the box with .NET Core 3 when it ships in September. The next version should have client technology coming with it if not it may slide into 2020 but there's definitely a push to get blazer client side with WebAssembly running and deployed and released to management as soon as possible so eh, maybe I do have a little bit of artifacting there because of the light eh, is that better I think we're all right now um, all right so there was a question here from insensitivity earlier where did it go Yep, let's open that up. Um, I, can somebody explain why this works? We had done a similar thing earlier in a video, waiting for agents' request to finish, but I don't understand the page is rendered when agents are null, so there's progress bar displaying. Why does the page 
re-render when agents is not null. How does it know and you should re-render that page segment? Let me look at this. Um, oh, so this kind of thing, I thought I saw, did I see, um, did I see SQL Mr. Magoo answering this question? I thought I did. A lot of things went by really quick there. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. Basically, the page renders first on an it async is called. It, it's also uh, monitoring those properties, and as those properties change, it sees the change and it forces a re-render in some of those things. So, you plan on using Blazor for a project? Awesome. Thank you for the follow, Cassie View. I think I can turn back on the alerts. I think we're okay with that coming back on now. My apologies for turning the alerts off. We had some folks that were not... Um, yeah, weren't exactly the most welcoming joining us. So thanks so much for the follow. Uh, Cassie Views. Uh, Namazri, Namazri, I thought you were following us. So, um, so that's what's going... I believe that's what's going on with that. There was another question that somebody had that I want to make sure that I handled. Okay, there was the how many screens. Solo Techno, thank you so much for the follow. Appreciate that. And I had double echo there because I have the editor open right now. Zabola92, thank you for the follow. All right. Now, we shouldn't have the echo now, right? It should only be coming through on me. Yeah, I think we're good. Yeah, should just be me right now. All right. So we've been working on this resource management application where we've been doing... Um, okay, the Bulldog too. Thank you for the follow. Wow, the follower train is happening. Thank you so much, everyone going to keep pushing that along. That's great. Um, so we've been working on this project where we're trying to build a scheduling application so that for this nonprofit organization, Sebastian Riding Associates, who every time I, I try and highlight something here, edit gets triggered. Like, I get it. You want me to be able to click and edit this thing. I want to be able to highlight. But... GitHub, fix that. Only if I click the edit button should I be editing, okay? Um... They're a nonprofit organization that helps teach um, d disabled folks, underserved, underprivileged youths, how to how to ride horses, how to how to learn a little bit about uh, horsemanship and what's involved with that. So it's a it's a organization that's close to my heart that I want to make sure that they get the help they need. So I've been building and working on this scheduling application so they can um, better manage the volunteers that need to be scheduled and help out with with teaching these lessons. And we've gone through, we've built an availability screen, we've got some great pull requests into the main project here that have have spruced that up and made an hourly schedule built in HTML look pretty nice. Where we left off last time was we were looking at the management view. When I have a list of volunteers out there that all log, here's my availability, I need to look across that now and say, well, when are my folks available? When are my folks not available that are working for me so that I can appropriately schedule those classes or get on the phone and say, hey, Jeff, um, I see you're not available on this day. Is there is there something we can do? You know, Or you didn't tell me that you were available on your normal time. Can we talk about that? How do we make that? Uh, how can we make that work out better? So those types of things are uh, what we want to be able to show here in a week-long view of the schedule. The Simeon says, stay clear of the horse's rear. You don't want to get a kick. Amen to that. You do not want to get kicked by a horse, particularly if it's got shoes on. A horse with shoes will hit you with that metal shoe, and it will hurt. If in, And it's even broken bones for folks. Be very careful around that. Absolutely. Um... Yeah, make sure the horse knows if you're going to walk behind it and uh, because you do not want it to be scared. 
All right. I think I can also turn on. It'll hurt without. It will hurt without the metal shoe, but it'll really hurt. <laughs> you are, you are very, very right there. I'm going to turn back on that latest follower label now. Now that we've got. Uh, that's why I only put flip flops on my horses. Also, why I don't have horses. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you. Flip flops on your horses. Come on now. Ugh. Um, <laughs> that's basically how JavaScript behaves. Nice. You know what? I'm not going to use the uh, voice modulator today. I don't need this. We can put that down. All right. Air Jordans, man. Air Jordans. All right. That's a thing. <laughs> uh, 3,000 pounds of toddler attitude. Yeah, that is a little bit what it's like when you have when you have horses. They've It, it is very much a toddler's type of attitude. So I'm going to go into the resource management application here. Open this up. Let's take a look at this. Why so sad to today at that? Um, well, I think we we got we got uh, tainted a little there from from our trolls that tuned in right up at the top. All right, here we go. Um, so here's my code. This is our CSS for the schedule. And I was thinking a little bit more about the schedule and the user interface that we've been building here. And I think there's an opportunity for us to do a little bit more here. Um, DeRitten says, isn't a flip-flop on a horse what they do with Broncos during a rodeo? Mm, you're losing me there. Um, Shankless. Uh, flip-flops are deadly weapons when wielded by Hispanic mothers. Yes, Entity Adam. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, Ryan, did you see the one that used a flip-flop in the it, to to knock the lid off of a, uh, a a water bottle doing that roundhouse kick water bottle challenge? Yeah. So we've already got this. <clears throat> excuse me. We've already got this availability view where, for a given date, it will show us. It should show us the schedule down here. Maybe I broke it. I may have. Oh, there we go. There's the holiday. It's not showing me these other dates. We may need, we may have an issue there we need to address. Maybe I, I maybe I did break it in some of the work that we did and some of the refactoring. But it's showing me my my schedule here for the full day from eight to eight, and we can now pass in to this grid component down here, this day view component, exactly what time span we want to present. And that's that's pretty cool. That's a that's a nice way to break this out and make make this component a little bit more um, single responsibility. It knows how to paint this grid. But I, I am seeing that some of these some of these days where we did have an event in here, it's not it's not quite presenting properly. And I also don't like how this date is also showing hours, minutes, seconds. I don't want to show that. I want to just format it with that short date, right? Month, day, year. In in a typical American culture, that's what we expect. Other folks, they want to see day, month, year. Whatever the case, your preference might be. ASP.NET will pick up what your culture is if I just say format this with short date and it'll format it appropriately. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Good choice of hats, says Goran Howe. Yeah, Blazer is very wonderful. I love this uh, hat. My only complaint, my only complaint about this hat, and I said this to to my embroiderer when she made the hat. Um, wonderful woman at my local custom embroidery shop that, that helps me out making the hats. She has a tremendous eye for, for how to position and get the logos looking great. I wanted to get the, the button on top purple. Part of me thinks I could go get a purple Sharpie and just color it in, but... That would have been really cool. Good pronunciation. Thank you. Yeah, don't mess with the grandmothers. I, whether they're a Hispanic grandmother, they're an Irish grandmother like my grandmother was, do not mess with her. Oh, oh, don't do that. You like year, month, day with leading zeros? Okay. Um, Voight Camp Phil says, looks like web forms. No, it's, it, it's web forms in the sense that it's very component-driven. Um, and that's okay. You see a lot of folks with with Vue and Angular and React building components because it is a good way to build user interfaces. Compose it with user interface components. The management and deployment of those different for each ecosystem. Let me go back over here to the user interface. Let's let's see if we can clean up just a little bit around 
what's going on there. Um, because it, I don't like how that date was being presented, and I want to figure out why it's not presenting some of those midday schedule items that I know I have saved in my database. Let's see if there's something wrong there. You, uh, you mean the calendar control on the right? Yeah, it does. It absolutely looks very web forms. So that's a good thing, right? I mean, web forms, very, very good technology over uh, several years. Um, I'm going to peek in here. So um, we've got, we've reached kind of a, a quorum here. I, I mentioned a little bit earlier on Twitter. Um, looks like I'm going to be writing my next book. I've been, I've been asked to write a book. And um, I'm thrilled that I've been asked to write a book, and I'm I'm going to be moving forward with that. Um, the let me see, it was yeah, it was right at the top of day view is where this was. Um, I've been asked to write a book about upgrading web the process of upgrading web forms applications to Blazor. Uh, Zandy, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us, um, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. So. I'm going to be starting working on that here in the next in the next week or so, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see if we can we can, what well, yeah, what we can make happen there. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, where so we had today is selected date that's commented out, but it's it's still showing. Hmm. But that's that was below my day view. Do I still have it? No, I don't have it up anymore. I can close that. Um, let me rerun this, and we'll take a look, and we'll debug through a little here and see what's going on. Next book. What was the previous one? The previous one, I can say, is now officially... Uh, the technology's dead. It was Sam's Teach Yourself ASP.NET Core. Look at that. It's got my name up top. Um, Teach Yourself ASP.NET Core in 24 hours. This... Um, was written on ASP.NET Core 1.1, which is now at end of life. That technology is no longer supported. Um, they don't want to do an ASP.NET Core 2. Um, but am I going to write it with some on-stream content? Yes, I think that is absolutely going to happen. Let's go look at the availability here and figure out where that's coming up. Selected date is. That's Where is that coming from? Right, that's coming from somewhere here. I'm just going to do a quick search, see if we can find this across the entire solution. There it is. It's in the day picker. Uh -huh. That's why I couldn't find it. So selected date, I'm going to format that and say uh, two short date string, which will, it should, detect your um, preferred culture settings in the browser and format appropriately. Uh, looks like day view start is not updating to the selected day. Um, we'll take a look at that, Sean. Maybe. Uh, let me see. Congrats. Well, thank you, Hugo. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm not myself. It's it's something that um, I've only written the one. Um, I en I enjoy writing. It's something. There you go. Now it's selected data is formatted properly. And the, the comment was from Sean was, it looks like day view start is not updating. Day view start. Well, these are updating. Day view start. Let me make sure I remember. Right. Well, I have it. Day view start, I'm just setting to an hour appropriately. And inside of the day view, um, I'm grabbing, right, day view start is here. Uh, I don't want to do control there. In the current document, if start is less than day view start, ah, day view start should be the selected date. It's still on the same date. Yeah. Hmm. Well, wait. Um, I think Sean's on to something here. Um, let me answer the rest of the questions here. How did you get involved with tech book writing? Asks I am not myself. Um, I'd been giving a, a number of presentations at various events, and I was approached by a publisher um, 
and I, I was actually introduced to a publisher years ago, uh, asked to write a SharePoint book. I know nothing about SharePoint. And uh, I had to turn them down. They were they were really pushing, oh, it'd be great. You can have somebody help you with this and you can really do it. I'm like, no. Um, so I had to turn that down. But they came back to me and said, hey, well, ASP.NET Core is a thing. Do you want to write a book on it? I was like, yeah, we can make that happen. ASP.NET Core changed so quickly in, in, and dramatically that I ended up rewriting that book three times before it got published. And the publisher was so angry at me because it took so long, but it kept changing. Literally, as I was getting ready to turn in chapters, entire in, entire chapters of content were completely invalidated. So I had to go back and rewrite and rewrite and rewrite. I was I had pages and pages. I had three chapters about Project JSON and how to manage it and how to interact with it and how to use DNX and all that stuff had to be completely rewritten. So yeah, that was a little annoying. Um, there's a question about will there be a Kindle edition? Yes. So we're going to be publishing like all the other Microsoft architecture books and you'll be able to get those. Um, Johnny Nibbles just resubscribed for six months. Look at the emotes being thrown in my face. Johnny Nibbles, thanks so much for the resub. Six months. That's going to put you into a blue hat. Congratulations. Um, nine, nine months gets you into a green hat. A year gets you into a rainbow hat with a propeller. Thank you so much. And we'll make a donation to... Um, Coder Dojo, like we are all quarter long to support those folks who are trying to build training organizations, uh, training facilities for software folks, technology folks all over the world. They're based out of Ireland, so we're, we're getting a little bit outside the states here on these. Um, it will be, well, it's not, it will be published and available printed through Microsoft Press, but you'll be able to download uh, from the Microsoft websites. Thank you, Johnny Sparkles. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, so let's see here. We are, you were a mentor for it. Yeah, it's a great cause. I'm really a big fan of what they're doing. So day view start, I have wired up to date time today. So the day that's being passed in, okay, let's, let's think this through. I think Sean's onto something because he, Sean was saying that this isn't being updated properly. Uh, this is where we're going to be, so let's move that over there. I'm not touching that one just yet. I don't need that page. So these are my different components. You can see them across the top here. I'm going to I'm gonna pin the CSS because we're going to end up doing a bit of work in the CSS here and close the index page. We're not going to be working on that. But these files you see here with the .razor extension, these are components. These are reusable objects that we can pick up and place on our page and they feel and look, they feel, they look like, and they behave like directives like you might use in some of the, some of the JavaScript frameworks. I haven't even gotten all of my sound effects lined up right here. So let's get in here. Let's see if we can fix this. See if we can make it better, better with Blazor. Sean's suggesting doing a break on line 27. Let me go back. Are you referring to the Day, not day view. And then, and then what? <laughs> you are asking about Microsoft Press, not in a directory. No, no, they're great. the The thing with Microsoft Press is, um, some folks are are, some folks look at them as, oh well, it's Microsoft only stuff. Yeah. All right, all right, already. Um, yeah, right here. If display item, and that's that's doing this check here do, 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 right here day view end and day view start the date that's being inspected here is probably the wrong date loving the end thens thank you there um, someone said to me that they don't like .NET Core as it's a Microsoft product was I right to say that it's actually a .NET Foundation product yes the Simeon yes indeed um, it's 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 interesting. I find it, it... It makes me sad at times to hear folks who say they won't touch a specific product because of a decision that a company made 20 years ago. Literally, the entire management chain of the organization has turned over. Literally, the entire practice has turned over. Um, thank you for the follow. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, and... I'm going to hold off pronouncing the, the 
pronouncing your name for right now. Thanks so much for joining us, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, the yes, the the change that you've seen is right. Microsoft as an organization is completely giving away for free all of the .NET technology, all of the compilers for C Sharp, VB, F Sharp, completely free. Works on every platform: Windows, Mac, Linux. You can use Visual Studio Code completely free. It was built so that you could compile and work with .NET on all of those platforms. But you know what? It works even better for folks who are doing JavaScript, TypeScript, Rust, Go, um, C++, Java. And that's great. They built plugins to support all of those things. So, and then they went and supported uh, GitHub. Who would you rather have own GitHub? Um, so it's a pretty good, pretty good move. It's a completely different organization. It's a completely different change in mindset. So, and some of those decisions were made, yeah, because Sun owned Java and sued Microsoft. Oracle owns Java now, and they went and sued Google. If Oracle owned GitHub, can you imagine what kind of legal shenanigans could have been going on? If Google owned GitHub, what kind of legal shenanigans would have gone on? GitHub by IBM. Yeah, wouldn't have been on the internet. There's a lot of different things when you think about who could be a steward for this. And when you see how Microsoft is very hands-off with these technologies, and they're letting the community grow and dictate how things happen, more than 40% of the contributions to .NET Core are from outside of the walls of Microsoft. That's huge. That's big. Right? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, it, if IBM owned GitHub, that's a terrible thing. It wouldn't have been great. Uh, four out of five mem members in your family have an IT degree. Your brother works for Oracle. Or Oracle makes some great technologies. They do. They, I, I have a challenge dealing with some of the mentality of their leadership around ownership and um, accessibility of their products. So, there's it, this is not your father's Microsoft. Thank you. That's a great comment there. Is that Zivla, Zivlai? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, IBM owning Red Hat is right is different that's a move that's ibm showing that they're moving in a different direction i definitely think that that's that's showing that the mentality at the top at ibm is changing and i hope to see more of that it's a that's a tremendous thing so um hey syropian good to see you entity adam big discussion on dotnet core last night totally agree dotnet core is done right they let the junk of dotnet framework die off and started fresh but still kept all the good parts. .NET Framework hasn't died off. Let's make sure we're clear on that. .NET Framework is a very strong component of Windows. What you're going to see when you when you heard about .NET 5 at build, the concepts they're moving forward with is .NET 5 is going to supersede both .NET Core and Xamarin, and it's going to run everywhere. And for a future technology that's going to support all those things, the th because you have strong compatibility from .NET Framework into .NET Core, everything should just work in future versions of .NET. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, Satya Nadella has been a main reason. It says Project Zero to Hero. Um, I, have, I've, I haven't met the man. Um, uh, several of my colleagues have, have worked with him and had an opportunity to, to work with him. Um, Tremendous vision. I I really like where he's going with things. I love the concepts of inclusivity. I very much appreciate um, his his family has he has a a um, he has a, a child that has um, challenges has is physically disabled, and we've done some things as as an organization to reevaluate how we help folks who. Who don't have um, who don't have full full capabilities, whether it's sight, um, hearing, um, 
right with their with their hands to be able to interact with technology and to be able to ensure that everybody everywhere can use Xbox game controllers, can use Visual Studio, can use Windows. You know what? I'm a, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. That's something that I think is a very good decision to make and I think make ensuring accessibility is a first class feature in every product. That's that's a tremendous um, that's a that's a tremendous value to instill in an organization as large as Microsoft. Um, started from the inside with people like like the Scots. Yes. Oh yes. So um, there are lots of unused features of .NET Framework that are moving up. Yep, all the Scots. There we go. Thank you, Copper Beardy. We have to remove those barriers so that we can, when we say inclusive, when we say diversity, we're not just talking about a person's skin color or the language they speak or their gender. We're also talking about folks that, you know what, they're... they're they've got their own perhaps mental challenges, physical challenges, and we want to be sure that we include and we support those folks also. And I know I'm not using, in this project, I'm not using all of those technologies yet. I'm not using ARIAs. I'm not using some of the things to make this great for folks who uh, need to use, right? Um, the the browsers, I forget what they're called, the browsers that, that read the interface. We'll get there. We'll get there. Let's make it work. We'll make sure that it's inclusive and we'll make this a really great application. So, hey only, good to see you. Text-to-speech technologies, yes. Thank you. Yep. So, the folks that the, the folks that are concerned and, and that say they won't use uh, .NET Core because of it, because it was Microsoft, like I said, they're... I hope they, they eventually see the light and they join us. There's there's a lot of really great things going on here. It's the fastest commercial framework that's available that you're going to get support for. So um, so I, I think Sean's right. We're having a problem here where when we click on this, I don't think it's passing through that selected date properly. So, right, that selected date, um, right, when we click on, where is it? The month I called day picker. I should probably call it like month view. I should call it month view. Naming is hard. You know what I mean? But we called it day picker. Now we know. And now we know that. Knowing is half the battle. Knowing is half the battle. It is. So when we do click on a day here, right? Um, let's make sure we understand this correctly. So here it is. On click, it reaches into my schedule state and it says select date whatever day this is my schedule state is an object up here that's being injected there it is and it has a selected date right there riff tracks supporter thanks so much for the follow uh, you know what I, i'm really enjoyed riff tracks that's a that's a uh, <laughs> i love the the uh, voiceovers, the the mystery science theater approach, and a number of the folks on Rift Tracks are former uh, alumni from the, the not former, but they are alumni from mystery science theater. I, I love the commentary back on the uh, the old movies. Really great stuff. I have a bunch of Rift Tracks um, that I've purchased and I listen to. So much fun, especially on the the latest um, the latest movies. Right, I think I have like the Matrix and the Avengers ones. So. And uh, Harry Potter, I have. Um, all right, so it's selecting. It's saying select date here. This method gets called, and it calls on selected date changed invoke, and it passes through the selected date. Okay, so that is coming through. So I'm, I've, I have to follow this event. So I clicked, right? When I click that button, it calls this, and it passes through. Well, here's the date you clicked, and it's going to raise this event, right? This is an event uh, object. Eh, this is an ev yeah, it's it, it's a C sharp event that we're invoking. Notify that this event happened, and we're going to say that the selected date that was selected was whatever you clicked. So I need to go through and see. Well, where is that on selected date changed being handled? It's being handled right here. My schedule state on selected date changed. This plus equal says wire up an event handler. 
when this event happens, do this thing. You're going to be sent some sort of an object and some arguments. Well, let's invoke state has changed. Let's tell it refresh the page. Well, when it refreshes the page, the we should s refresh the the component. We should see. Da, 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 da. We should see that selected date, right? Uh, which is right here. Yeah, that same value. That selected date should be passed around, and we should appropriately paint the values for that selected date. So here's what I'm thinking. Timeless, thank you for the follow. I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, so what I'm thinking is the select, we need, so day view start, this is really just the time of day, which I, I can't turn this over into a time span because then it gets to be a little messy to pass it in. Circle 83, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you following us. A lot of new followers today. Wow. Thank you so, so much. You're a first timer. Well, welcome, Timeless. Um... We're, we're writing a little C-sharp inside of... This is called a Razor component. So that we can uh, we can update a web page. And I'm tracking down a little issue here. So, display item. I think this is going to be our issue right here. We're, we're checking around... So, let me explain what I'm seeing here in chat room. Tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong here. And this is, this is why I like to refer to chat room sometimes as our pair programmers. So I'm passing in the day view start. And I'm really, this is really the time of day that I'm capturing for this. Oh my gosh, John Calloway. John Calloway I got to stop for a second here. Wow. Thank you so, so much. And, and we get the fountain of emotes here all over my face. Can we see that? Thank you so, so much. Five gift subs to the chat room. We're going to make donations to Coder Dojo for all of those. But Ruanders, uh, uh, Microsoft, Vlado, uh, Coded Beard, 97422, and THE Juni Von Ash. Congratulations. You've all got gift subscriptions from John Calloway. Thank you so, so much. That is tremendous. Um, you're going to get access, all those uh, subscribers, you're going to get access to 17, 17? I think it is 17 emotes. And, not Galloway, John Calloway. John, John Galloway is not here today. Um, and every time you drop an emote in channel, it's going to appear on the screen here right next to me. Thank you so, so much. That is very kind. And we will make a, uh, we will make those donations. For Thank you so much. Hey, Vile. He spells his name wrong. Yeah. Galloway spells his name wrong. <laughs> um, only subscribers will the, uh, will the emotes go by on. All right. So what's happening here is this is a time of day that's being passed in so that for our day grid that we're displaying here, we know the time of day to start and the time of day to end down here. So really, while they say day view, start, day view, end, and it's a date time, really we're just care we only care about the time. I think what's happening is when we're deciding whether or not to display the item, we're checking to see if it's within these two times. Well, I think we need right the the start and end. I think we need to look at the time of day on these and compare time of days so that we have the same units because it's outside of it. What's a ute? Uh, <laughs> that's a cousin Vinny, re my cousin Vinny reference. Timeless says I have I have zero experience with C sharp, but really interested in creating an add-in for Revit application, a 3D model creating for construction industry. Nice. Taking baby steps to learn it. Okay. Um, I don't have a follow age command. I wonder who write, how how that works, but I don't have one. Huh. Um, I didn't say Ute, did I? I know I've got that Mid Atlantic accent thing going. I think we can fix this by looking at both the time of day on both of these so right these are date objects and the date object in dotnet has 
a time of day reference here, a uh, time of day property that we can inspect. And we're just saying, well, we want to only want to display it if we actually have the, the time in that day, right? Um, so we're going to inspect every schedule item that comes along to determine how it loads up there. Where am I from? Asks Rift Track Supporter. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm, and I've been trying to lose my accent. The Philadelphia accent is actually very unique. It's not like that Baltimore accent. And I know, I know I've got some friends in the in the chat room that love folks from Baltimore. They've got some colleagues, some coworkers in Baltimore. It, I, and I'm exaggerating how you say Baltimore, because a lot of folks from Philadelphia say Baltimore. No, it's not Baltimore. And you go down to in New Jersey when you head to the east side when there's a, there's the beach there and you have those sh those resort towns. It's down the shore. And I've tried to avoid saying water. We say water here in Philly. It's water. <gasps> Better, but that's not right. Now I've really uh, now my CSS is broken, but it's appearing properly. We're getting these things to properly appear. There we go. Even though, right, I broke the grid, so it's not formatting that appropriately. We'll fix that in just a minute. Hey, yo, you from Philly, you must like them cheesesteak sandwiches. I do. I love me a Philadelphia cheesesteak. Oh, my gosh. We, um, there's a, there's a place near me here called Pudges. If you're going to order a sandwich that's made of, uh, chopped steak, chopped chicken, cheese, onions, and it's solved, sir, and it's served on a long roll, um, you want it from a guy named Pudge. It's true. I can't argue with it. Oh my. Thank you for the Live Coders link. The Live Coders team, that's a group of us that all teach about writing code live here on Twitch. And um, who was it was asking? Timeless. Um, check out check out our friend uh, on the team, CLW. Uh, that's not the right command. Shout out for uh, CLW. That's Corey Hurricane Weathers. Um, he's been doing a great intro to C Sharp series on his channel. Head over there, click the videos link. He did a, a, a great intro for folks who were learning C Sharp yesterday, and he continues to iterate on that series. So make sure you make sure you check him out. He can use a follow. There, look at the hurricanes going by there. And uh, yeah, we're gonna support all the folks on the Live Coders team and and refer folks back and forth. Hey, if you want to learn about SAP, you want to learn about SAP. Um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on his name that does the SAP, um, the, the S, the, we have an, we have a, a gentleman on the team who works on SAP and shows folks how to do that. You want to learn about, uh, Unity? You want to learn about game development? Check out Lana Lux. Check out Tim Baudet. Check out, um, d Dr. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting names now. Oh, I'm doing terrible. LiveCoders.dev. Checked out Dr. Mikachu. She's got tremendous stuff over there. Lies Live is doing stuff that's really great. You want to learn about Ruby? Talk to me. Gooseman's been doing some stuff with that. Xamarin? James Montemagno's here. TypeScript, and you want to do some cool 3D rendering? That sounds like something that folks are interested in. You got to check out Code Rushed with my friend. Um, Mark Miller. He's been doing a dice rolling uh, application in his in his stream. Seeing dice roll is just amazing. And and it's all images. It's all being rendered in a web browser. You got to check it out. Live coders are doing some really really great stuff. All right. Back back to this. So I got to figure out why I've lost my style here. Uh no. Wrong browser. So I'm using, this is at Microsoft Edge, the Edge browser in Canary Build. I was asked very politely by folks in marketing to give this a try. So I do all my debugging over here in Microsoft Edge. It has the Chromium um, tools in it. It has the Chromium rendering in it. So I get a great standard HTML5 rendering. Um, you will notice that for all of my other browsing, I use Firefox. I feel as a web developer, it's good to have more than one browser that you use on a regular basis. 
so you know the seams and the edges between the different things because not everybody uses the same browser. So there you go, Code Rush with the is here. Hey, how's it going, Mark? Great to see you, Whoa. the Mark Miller. Absolutely. And here's the thing about watching Code Rush. Not only are you going to learn and see these really cool animations that he's working on and building with some cool sound effects and things. Um, he's 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 been doing some really neat things to get chat interacting with the user interface. Um, but he's. And he is literally one of the world's experts on great user interface design. And when he talks about how things appear and feel in a user interface, he knows what he's talking about, and he's not wrong. So there's a lot you can learn from him just by looking at how he builds a user interface and how he manages the interactions of things. Really great stuff. you got to check out Code Rush. Thank you for the shout-out, Hugo. I appreciate you dropping that over there. Um, so... Let me head back over here. I lost my CSS here. My styling on this. There it is. Schedule item right here. So that schedule item, for some reason, I lost. Right here it is. It should have a papaya whip background, but it's it's not it's not doing the thing here for me. Uh, there we go. It's a shame that browsers were so competitive in the early days. We could have had some standards a long time ago. Yes. Yeah. The height isn't being calculated correctly in the component. We may need time of day in those methods. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. Right there, it's being... Well, no, the height's being set as 3 EM. Right? That is is being dropped. Because there. There it is, right there. So, and that's the one being calculated in the component. I see what you're saying, Sean. Okay. So, where is it? The item top position, item height. Here. Yeah, that's it right there. So, we're doing a check again here. Let's do this. If item, I mean, we can probably do the same thing with the time of day. Right? Dot time of day. Dot and it should set that well that gets it mm. Mm. we don't want to say end dot we want to specify that the time of day on the ending of this is appropriate I'm going to run into the same thing here so wait start and end are full dates Hmm. What if we make that? What if we just grab the time span for those? Right? What if we have start time equals start dot time of day equals end dot time of day? But we need to do this, right? This end checking here. So we can probably turn this into, right? Into an order. Uh, is that. Is that Ratchmanian or is it Rachmanian? Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, let's see. We had standard discrepancies between browsers came from how strictly or loosely they interpreted the standards. And then they added their own non-standard stuff to lure web devs. Yeah. The, the browser rush um, became a thing. If start is less than date time... No... Day, view, start. That's it. Uh, time of day. So, if it is less than the right, then I want the start to be the day, view, start. Uh, yeah. Day, view, start, time of day. Otherwise, it should be start, time of day. And if I do the same thing here... Right, so that I'm doing this check up front. If that is greater than or equal to, uh, yeah. Day view and time of day. Thank you. Um, then we're gonna set it to that. Otherwise, it'll be the end time of day. So I can get rid of that check. Um, add two extra minutes for negative top position 
So I can I can probably still have this check. Right, and just get rid of that so that we do that check. Total minutes equals end subtract start. To, well, let's change this to end time. Start time. So that I'm working with just the times, right? That's a time span. In working in, in .NET, we have date time and time span. Date time is both date and time. Time span is just a, a reference to time units. So yeah, Sean, Sean's giving me the thumbs up. Wow. I trust Sean. All right, so height is this times total minutes. Total minute, and I love the calculation sitting here. That's great stuff. Um, adjust for row gaps. Yeah, good idea. Da, da, height equals. So now instead of end dot hour, I want this to be end um, end time. Start. Oops. Oops. There we go. Typing. I do it well. Um. Wait a sec. Why is it not? Um. <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. Let's do in time dot. Uh, hang on. Sub. Come here. Subtract. There we go. Uh, start time. Okay. Dot. Hours. Total hours. Right. Now that's a double. I don't want a double. I want an integer. There we go. That'll work, right? Uh, you don't need to change that, leave them as is. I... Well, no, I need to. I thought I wanted, well, if we do total hours. Well, let's see what happens. Now this is a razor component, which is compiled and run. So I need to actually restart the application to get in and see it. Let's see how we can get this to look. I... I'm not opposed to it coding Gorilla. It also means that it's going to be a little bit... It's going to stretch a little bit uh, outside of... So let's... Maybe. You love it when the chat room helps out and things... Yeah, I agree, Corey. There's... Um, the, right? This type of pair programming where we get feedback and, and we've got folks saying, Ooh, what about this? Or, you know what? That's not quite right. Let's see if we can get this to line up right. So... That's better, right? Um, I'm not getting the full day appearing there. There's the my haircut. There's the blazer. So those are appearing properly, but these ones where it's a full day because it's right. This is I was taking holiday this week. It's not showing the full day off. So we got just a little bit more work to do there. So when I have a full day off, right? So the start time when it's a full day off, you know what? Let's just set a breakpoint. Let's debug it and actually see what happens when I click this. It does nothing. Jeff, it did nothing. Are you kidding? Why didn't it do anything? I should have gotten my breakpoint. Why didn't I get my breakpoint? Breakpoint, breakpoint, breakpoint. Um, select date. Let's see what this does. So click this one. There we go. So the selected date is uh, June 26th. Okay, that's really small. I'm sorry. Um, and when I look at the time slots, there are 16. Oh, that's terrible. 721, 719. Well, wait a sec. Okay. What? What day did I select? 626. Okay, so when I look at time slots, 722, 723, 7, 628, 629. This is terrible. I don't like looking at this. You know what? Let me show you a thing or two here. There's a trick we can do for these time slot objects so that it's easier to see what they look like. Um there's two things you can do. You can either put a two string method on it, or there's also a debugger um, display. Right? 
and you can control how the Visual Studio debugger, how the .NET debugger will display. The string will be displayed in the value column for instances of type int. So, let me show you this real quick. Da, 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 da. This is actually really, really handy, and I love being able to do this. You can actually, following table shows, right? So you can actually have it evaluate what that is, and it'll format appropriately what the debugger had, uh, outputs for you. So you can put in anything you want in those curly braces, and it'll format appropriately for you. So I'm going to change this for my time slot here so that it is uh, name and I'm going to put start date time um, yeah and to end date time and now when we go and debug through there we should be able to see that Please don't use the override to string trick that can use to lead to more intricate issues down the road. It can. It will. Um, it's another way to activate it. Whatever you set for that to string, the, the point is you're going to get that when you to string something. And you're also going to uh, have it in the debugger. It's in both places. So you can inadvertently... Uh, oops, I didn't want to do that you can inadvertently trigger something that you didn't want to happen. So let me go up here. I'm going to click on that. Now when I look at my time slots. Come here. Time slots. 16 of them. And now when I click into it, look at that. Now it actually looks like and shows me all of these things. I have no name for some of these things down here in the later on. Um, that's okay. But I'm particularly looking at... I mean, these ones I guess are okay. Um, and they're for an hour. That's okay. That's fine. But I was looking up in here, and why didn't it pick off that? Was it because I went time of day, and it was across days. Hey, ancient coder, good to see you. What is the purpose of a breakpoint? Asks timeless. It'll stop building, right? It'll stop running right here, and I can inspect everything. Right, I can see exactly the old selected date was July 2nd. Well, it's already set. Um, so, <coughs> so I'm able to uh, inspect what's going on. So what I think is going on that we're going to need to address here is when I look... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Repaint the screen. When I look in here on one of these, right... Nocturnal plant. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. It's. I don't think it's handling the date appropriately because I'm selecting June 26, and I look at the time slots that were allocated. There is a June 26 here time slot that has a start date and an end date from 6:26 through to 7:20. That's not right. That time slot calculation is wrong for the June holiday. That's not right. I think we found a, a break in our time slot calculation. We should create a unit test around that. Let me take some notes. Let me take some notes. Um, time slot calculation for June holiday is not correct. So we're gonna, I have some unit tests to verify that calculation. That looks like it's not working. I agree, Sean. If it's looking at just the hours and not that it's across days, it is going to return a zero. We're going to run into that. Dr. Malevolent Fighter. Welcome. I appreciate you joining us. So with the calculations that we just put in, I think, I think Sean's right. If we look at the day view, this is only looking at time of day and it doesn't take into account that it's on a different day then it will not show that so if it's less than the time of day it we want it to be so
So day view start is really just the time of day. It's not the selected day. The selected day is, where do we stick the selected day? It's in my schedule state, selected day. So let's also do this, end start dot date um, less than or equal to, right? Um, my schedule, my schedule state selected date. Right, that way we're ensuring that it's looking at the same date. And we want to do the same thing here where the end is greater than or equal to. Um, no, wait, that one we want to be less than or equal to, so it's the time of day. This one, if it's equal to the selected date, then it's the time of day. I think that's right. Do we have a property here called selected day? I don't see it. Am I missing it? Ah, there it is, selected date. Okay. Well, I could have hit that a little bit easier. Uh, that's better. Okay, so if the start, if the time of day is let, if the time of day of the object of the scheduled item that we're comparing to, if it starts earlier than, if its start time is earlier than this, And if its date is the same date. No, if it's less than or equal to, then we want the start, we want to recalibrate the start to be the time of day. If the end time of day is greater than or equal to the day view time of day, Yeah, they do get unwieldy. Yeah. Um, welcome, Dr. Malevolent Fighter. Yes, the question mark is like an if statement. I'm saying test these things over here. And that's going to come up with a true or false. It's a Boolean value. Is the time of day that of the schedule item we're testing earlier than the time of day we're presenting? And its date less than or equal to the date that we're showing. If that's true, then output this value that's right after the question mark. If it's false, output the value after the colon. It's a shorthand notation, so you can do a real quick one line if then statement on one line. And assign, yep, it's called a ternary. Thank you. And we assign the output to this variable and we'll use that variable later on. So I'm thinking through, so that schedule item, so if the schedule item ends, if the time of day that it ends is greater than or equal to the time of day, which if it's midnight, it's actually going to be less than that time of day. Because it, right so it's it's less than it because it's not before it and if the end date date is less than or equal to the selected date no if it's greater than or equal to the selected date then we're going to have it end at the time day um this should be an or And this should be an or also. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right. Um, mm -hmm. It might be better to put all the logic in ifs and to get the method made more clear. You, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. 
let me see if this works and maybe we can break this out a little bit into a little bit a little bit clearer logic so that we can show it let's see what happens yeah let me turn off the breakpoint because now the breakpoint's getting annoying so here it is this 26 and yeah that's not working actually it's not even looking at a schedule item we didn't even hit that okay that's wrong um would it be simpler to add an all day flag field no no I I will disagree on that one all right let's do this let's break this out and make this a little bit simpler because we're getting confused here a little bit this is a time span that we want for the start time So let's, let's see if we can make this a little bit clearer. If the start time of day is less than the day view, right, where we're showing its time of day that we're starting, then we do want, right, we want the start time to be that day view time of day otherwise if the um, start dot date is less than the selected date right so if the date is earlier right because it's something that goes over three days straight then we at this then we also want no no fingers butter fingers my apologies then my start time is also the day view uh, start time of day otherwise the start time is the start time of day I think that's right now uh, and I can get rid of that okay next test um, let's set up a time span for end time as well. Time span, end time. Okay. So if end time, time of day, we'll put that right in there, is greater than equal, greater than or equal to the time of day that we're stopping displaying, um, then end time is going to be the day view and uh, time of day. Else, if the end uh, date is greater than uh, selected date, end time equals the day view end time of day. Otherwise, the end time equals uh, end dot time of day. I think that's what we want. How am I, do how am I doing there, chat room? Is that right? Um, is it a style choice or is there anything undefined behavior that can happen with them? Wrong answer, Fritzbot. Um, I don't think there's any undefined behavior. Readable source code with or without them. Yeah. Yeah, it is a little bit of obfuscating the way that it was. So, let's see if that works properly. And we'll come back, take a look and make sure that calculation is right. And hopefully we'll get back then to our presentation. Try to get weak view working. All right. Starting, where's my browser? I don't need that open right now. Because I accidentally... Come on, open the browser. Thank you. All right, let's look at that availability. Okay. So that still looks okay. That looks better. It's not ending and rolling off the end here. Good. But when I look at these, it's still not showing me the full day. It's not even testing. Right? It's not even doing this. Where'd it go? 
Well, item row height is one thing. Um, there's the... Where's the test if it should be displayed? Display item. Here. I clicked. There it is. Okay. So, display item. This is checking if 627 to 721, if that should be displayed. Well... Um... <laughs> this is the same problem. This is the exact same problem. Time of day is zero. End time of day is eight. So that's less than. False. The end time of day, okay. Less than the start time of day. That's true. Uh, I think you, I think the logic here is a little... All right, let's tinker with this. Let's tinker with this. I think we need the same. Um, I think we need, need to modify. Here we go. I think we need to modify this. Start day view is um, the selected date add um, day view start time of day. End day view equals selected date because the selected date is a, uh, let's just make sure this is just the date and we're gonna add the time of day To it. So now, if the object we're inspecting, if that date time is greater than the end day, yeah. Um, day, start day, uh, wait a sec. Uh, start day view. I think this is backwards. Backwards in the logic I normally think through, but let's take a look. See, um, I think you got me hooked on these hacker rank katas. Nice. That's great stuff. Right. Loading. Loading. Come on, load already. Throw me a freaking bone here. Right? Okay, let's see. That should have this fixed now, right? It paused. We hit a pause here, didn't we? Okay, there we go. So there's that. That's in the appropriate place. Good. Good. That still looks good. That still looks good. There we go. That's how it's supposed to look. All fixed. Good. Um, I'm going to commit that change. I use uh, git for my source control. All right. Uh, what? CD dev resource management. Yeah. Fixed. Um, fixed schedule item display on the day view. All right, that was a problem. There it goes. I'm gonna, hey, I'm typing here. I'm typing here. There we go, push that up, right? Do it live. Yeah, get that updated live. Now, the other thing that we thought we saw a problem with is the time slot calculation for the June holiday object is not correct. So, how do we do that? Uh, I thought it's called Blazor Components. Yes, they are. Blazor Components, Razor Components, they change names twice on us now. Um, so I think my time slot calculation for that is not correct. So I'm going to go down here to my test scheduling. We have this simple recurring schedule set of tests here. Hey, I told you to. it's not going to collapse. 
So when expanding the schedule, we have a schedule that it's going to test with and make sure that all the different scenarios work. I'm going to use live unit testing. This is a feature of Visual Studio Enterprise Edition where it'll automatically run all my unit tests as I make changes to the code. And right now you can see all my scheduled tests have passed properly. Let me run over and go into my Postgres database, which is running on Docker here in this container. Let me, let's get inside of there and take a look at what that record looks like for that June holiday bring that record out, put it into our unit test here, and inspect exactly how it's how it's calculating the time slots there because we don't think it's right. So I'm going to grab the real data here and start working with it. Um, I need to go into the resource management, and I'm going to execute bash. I'm going to execute the shell so I can get in here. Um, and uh, I'm going to log in. I think it's, I think it's a lower U that I want. And that should jump me in. Yep. Uh, show me my tables. Uh, wait a sec. Maybe it is capital U. Yep. Uh, fantastic. I remember the password. All right. So there's all of my tables. None of them are named Robert. <laughs> see, see what I did there? See what I did there? No, not you. Okay. Um, isn't this Enterprise Visual Studio only? This this feature is, you can run your unit tests several other ways. This is the way that I'm choosing to run it for right now. Um, there are unit test runners in Visual Studio Code as well. Um, so I want to look at that recurring schedule. I like to use capitals for all of my SQL commands when I key them in. And because we're on a Linux machine and these are mixed case table names, I have to use quotes around it. But there's my June holiday right there um duration that's interesting why does it have duration saved like that that's interesting recurring schedule ah it saved it Duration shouldn't really need to be saved. Oh, no, we do need duration saved. Okay. Duration is 24 days. So it is, it's bringing that back out and turning it into a time span. Okay. Um, but the min start time, max end time look funny here. So let's do something about that. Let's, let's grab these data points and make them actually something that we can work with here in a unit test. So I like to make, I like to take all of, all of our bugs that we find and turn them into unit tests. So I'm going to add another class here for this. When expanding schedule um, across multiple days. Uh, that's a class. Thank you very much. There we go. And I'm going to move this. Uh, I will move it into another another file here in just a second. Um, I'm going to grab... I'm going to create a place for the logger factory. And... Uh, yeah. Have a recurring schedule here. The min start time for this one is... Just so we get it looking exactly the same. June 23rd. And the end time is June 30. So let's let's see if we can get this thing working. Showing the right. The cron pattern is 00, zero star star star. We're using a cron pattern to log the recurrence because um, it's really easy for me to store a recurrence pattern in a way that we can parse and turn into um, a known a well known uh, repetition across time. So that actually works really nicely. I'm going to say time span parse so we can get it to parse this value appropriately of 24 days. Now, that's interesting. It's 20, it says 24 days here, but it's 
not 24 days. That's weird. Right? I mean, it's it's seven days, but it says 24 days here. I'm going to pass that in, and let's see what it does. Because that, that doesn't feel right. Some of the Twilio power from CLW? Absolutely. I, uh, I saw you guys have a Twilio team now. That's pretty cool. So for the bugs, we don't code. We don't need to write unit tests. That's right. I, drink, I also... And I know things. I do. I drink and I know things. Okay. Woo! Um, so there is that. I'm going to leave that one up. Okay. Um, so time span parse. That's fine there. Good, good. Okay. So now I can start to actually expand the schedule and take a look at what it's actually doing. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy and paste this here. Thanks so much to our new followers, John or not, and is that sad NVD? Thanks so much for the follows. I appreciate you joining us, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, now that I have those things, I'll move this out. And I noticed that Karnak is not running. So I want to make sure you can see my hotkeys. Uh, Spabby and Chef Brent all light up all on Tuesdays. Nice. All right. So now, where'd my other file go? Where'd my other file go? There we go. All right. So when expanding across multiple days. So I have this. Should expand within delimited dates only. Yeah. I should end up with, right, if I say expand the schedule between, uh, let's say, 6... 24 and 6 26 I should end up with two two of these and it should start at 0 o'clock and it should run should run the full day Reslap thanks so much for the resub and uh, look at the look at the emotes on my face look at this Thanks so much for joining us. That's going to put you into a purple uh, uh, subscriber badge. Purple hat subscriber badge. Thanks so much for joining us. And I really I, so I appreciate the support. And we're going to make a donation to Coder Dojo, who support folks that are building um, training facilities um, for folks that want to learn how to learn technology, learn how to be a software developer everywhere in the world. All right, here we go. I want to see this one get tested here. When expanding schedule across multiple days, I should see it down in here. Right? Should expand with delimited dates only. And it's not running the test. Well, I turned on live unit testing now. There we go. Now we got some errors. Now we got some errors. I think. There we go. So this. Look at that. Format exception. String 24 days was not recognized as a valid time span. Ah. Ah. So what's it doing with that? You knew that would blow up? Why didn't you say something, man? You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Come on now, help me out here. It's okay to tell me, hey Jeff, that's wrong. Tell me, it's okay. It's a, it's, it's just fine to to come back and say, yeah, we got to fix that. That's not right. Um, so let's do this. Let's go to. Um, Leviani. Leviani just resubscribed for nine months. C sharp hype bot, keep calm and keep on coding C sharp hype bot. Thanks so much for the uh, for the resub, and we'll make another donation to Coder Dojo. Look at the hype! Absolutely. All right, let's do this. Um, I'm not quite sure why that 24 days isn't loading properly. Right, which means right 20 the. Let's run the application and see what actually happens with that data. Because that feels weird. You know? You know what I'm saying? 
Um, I'm going to go into schedule state where it's actually going to manage and save that state. Come on, Visual Studio. There we go. Um, da -da -da. Expand schedule here. Um, right there. So we should get the schedule expanded at some point. There we go. Schedule, min start date, max end date. So I'm going to look at the schedule here. Two recurring schedules. We're going to need to look at this. There's the June holiday. Duration is 24 spot 000. zero, zero. So that worked. 24 total days. But even though it's not 24 total days... The time span column is not a string literal. It's a time slot. It's and it's not 24 days. Hey, John or not? Um, well, that's not the one I'm looking at. That one I'm. I think we're okay with. It's in the recurring schedule here. The duration is, is that my problem? No. It, it's. I think the duration is intended to be twenty four hours, and it's not saving it properly. Or it didn't save it properly. Right. It feels like... Let me go back over to this. It feels like this should be... Like that. Okay. Now we're... Now we're cooking with gas. Here, let's look at this. Right, I can debug this now. Let's take a look. See, so all of this, right? I'm I'm debugging. I'm letting. I'm saying, run this unit test, and we're gonna break right there as we're running the test, so we don't have to start the entire application and step through and look at everything here. So when I look at my schedule now, right? There's its one recurring schedule. And it I, doesn't have a name. I didn't assign a name. But look at that. The duration is 24.00, right? 24 days, even though it's not 20. It's, it should be 24 hours, not 576 hours. So it's like, that's what it saved. Hours, minutes, seconds. But it's not hours, minutes, seconds. It's being picked up as days, hours, minutes. So if I change it to that, is that different? Whoa! Time span string could not be parsed because at least one of the numeric components is out of range. What if it's 2359? Um, we might be closer here. What about 0, 0, 24, 0, 0? You might be onto something sad, NVD. Or 0, 0, 24, 0, 0. Or 1, 0, 0. So it's one full day. So now if I look at my schedule, my schedule. I need another debugger view here, don't I? For that recurring schedule. Duration, 23.59.0. If I open that up, 23 hours, 59 minutes. Yeah. So it's not the full day. And it's only returning... Well, it's starting at midnight on the 24th. So I should get two dates. One for the 24th and one for the 25th when that expands. Right? But I'm only getting one entry coming back. And it's from the 25th. 
at midnight. So that. So what if maybe we need to take it like this? And I think the expand schedule. <laughs> isn't isn't handling the when it starts at the same time as the requested start time. You're right. Um, if I do it like that, is that one hour or one minute? Um, I wish I could just log something here real quick and it would just dump it out right over there. Right. If I did console right line, but X unit doesn't work like this. My schedule, recurring schedules, zero. Um, duration, total hours. Right, it's not gonna dump that out on the console over here. Thank you for the follow, Victor. Victor composes. Uh, I'm guessing you're into music. Nice. Debug right line. Um, I don't think debug will. I'll put it here in my test detail. Um, oops, forgot the using statement. Get that in there. Yeah, it's not going to output over there either. You need, there's a whole console logging, iLogger thing that you have to pass in to get XUnit to log items. Um, um, capturing unit output, you have an iTest output helper, and you have to set this thing up yeah and then you'll get a little output thing so if I include that I need to create it on a constructor up here somewhere I test output helper test output wait a sec there's a thing here where I can do that. So now I can say, learn that from Javier yesterday. It should appear over here now. Right? Uh, ooh, it doesn't like. Fine. That should run now and one so yeah that hours entry right that time entry if I do it like that yeah string oh where'd it go where'd it go it didn't like that uh it already ran wow that was fast magic you mean magic be a nice little message box show there we go so we got 24 hours because i opened it up to that format so that's telling me that my duration format that i'm saving isn't being persisted properly in the right that i that feels to me like an entity framework issue right um yeah Anyways, um, that's gonna be a that's gonna be an issue. We're gonna need to open that it stores time span wrong, or is it I'm passing in the time span wrong when it's being created? Could be. Hey, Lily Hazel, good to see you. Welcome. See that? All the subscribers getting those emotes flying by the screen. Love seeing that. Love seeing it. Uh, Griffman G. Welcome. I appreciate the follow. 
Look at those follower counts going up. Oh my gosh, the follower train is real. And I hope you stick around tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to do our full day ASP.NET Core workshop. So I think the expand schedule here is not properly including the less than on the beginning. Instafluff's emotes there. Nice! Hey there, Griffman. So when we expand the schedule, it should... It's in the expand recurring schedules is where I'm testing. When it's looking at the beginning time, when it's went right to say, well, and I think it's this calculate intersection. I don't think when they're equal, when the start date time is, um, oh, look at that. Okay. Let's pass a logger in here so we can look at this when it's doing the expansion. Strange. Right, I can pet, uh, where's the logger? There's a way to pass, there it is, I logger down at the end. So, um, test logger equals new logger? No. I'm going to wrap that test output helper so that I can log it. We did this over here in these ones. I had a logger over here somewhere. Um, public class x unit logger i logger um don't care don't care i need to return an i disposable Nope, not gonna like that either. Rats. Oh yeah, we're getting closer to that beard. Absolutely. Uh, even giving live coders a shout out on LinkedIn. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Just looking, fantastic. This is a pain in the neck. I know, and then what do I do? Right? I can't just... Right, there's... Uh, you know what? Let those throw an exception. Blah. It's the log down here that I'm concerned about. And I want to pass into this. Um, love the end thens. Right? We're going to pass in the same eye test unit helper here so that we can work with it. There. Test output helper, and I'll create and initialize a field so that down here I can just say test output helper dot right line. Are you kidding? I don't have a string there. What a no! Which logger is this? Yeah. Uh, JG, aka Jeremiah's Grant. Well, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. That's a pain in the neck, and it's just not going to be friendly there. Dear Lord. Right, I mean... I'm not writing an exception, and I'm not... Can I say format or invoke, and it'll give me a string? State exception. Can I do that? Is that all I need? Um, so now if I look up here, uh, test logger equals new. What did I call it? X unit logger. X unit logger. 
and I need to pass in uh, test output helper so I can look at that thing. So now when I look at expand schedule right here, I believe there's a logger. Right, I thought expand schedule had a logger on it that we could pass in. There it is. So it wasn't visible in my signature there. Interesting. That's a bug. Come on. Any restrictions on t-state not being a string? Well, t-state is the object that we're looking at. Oh, this is going to take way too long. Crumbs. So now, it looks like it's going through and doing the thing. There we go. Checking time one against time two. There it is. So time one, 624 to 626. That's the time span that we're looking at against this. So they do overlap. Time two is contained entirely within time one. Fantastic. It's the other way around. But, yes. Okay, so it is passing when we do the schedule expansion, right? And this is this is a, a common bit of logic that we have to go through here. So we're expanding the recurring schedules. Right, calculate intersection of time slots here. And it's saying, it said time, this is the one that it, it output and where we've got the X's actually. So they are overlapping. So it is indicating that there is a an intersection there. Okay. So expand recurring, recurring schedules. It has calculated it. Add range get next occurrences from value begin to value end. This is where I bet there's a problem. <coughs> There it was. I think that's it. Expand recurring schedules. This. Cron tab schedule parse the cron pattern. And we're going from expand range value. The begin. Okay. I think we want to go start that from like one second. Um... Add seconds minus one. Does that fix it? Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. Fantastic. All right. So now, now we've got that test fixed. So now when we go back and we run and we look at the user interface, now we should see the overlay. That makes sense to me now. All right. Whew. That was some logic. Oh my goodness. Thank you for the hype. Look at all the love. Absolutely, we found the problem, I think. I think. Hey, Rambly Geek, thanks for stopping in. Yeah, unit tests save the day. And we'll know if we break this in the future. I know also, right, just looking over here, before we get any further, we look at anything more. Um, where is it? I want to find the the live unit test window. I have no idea where that is. No. Live unit testing. I want to I want to view the live unit test window. No. Where is it? View other windows. Uh, I, okay, is another test live unit testing? No, it's not there either. Okay, test windows. Is it here? Test Explorer. Okay. Is it there? That's not the same. And it's not going to run. You make me sad. Mm, live unit tests are really great. Uh, there are some plugins that you can get for Visual Studio that'll do the same thing. Um, that'll do a lot of this same feature. So there, those things are working. Okay. This, those work. And now it properly has the overlap. And there's even one here where it overlaps because... It's a recurring that starts on the same time. Fantastic. Okay. That all works. Let's go back. Um, um, here we go. 
So this was the user interface that I wanted to work on, and I was thinking about this, right? Because we're just laying out day views next to each other. Bump, 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 bump. When we lay these out, we don't really need the time on each column. You know what I mean? Uh, Goren Hall, question regarding the Visual Studio 2019 preview. I get the message that your trial period has ended. Um, so you can only run a trial if you don't have a license for I think it's three months on the um, which is weird um, if you don't have a license at all so okay I want to be able to turn off the extra columns with time here if you don't need to show it and I think, looking at our, our, our time here, I think we're going to need to uh, cut it off right there. Oh, so here's the unit test. Um, I can force all of them to run here. Yeah, run all. So this is running one off if each time you compile versus the live unit testing. They're trying to reconcile these two features. Um, community edition is great to use as well. Yeah, you can always use community edition. So they all work. They're all testing positive. So I didn't break anything in that change that I made. Good. Let me go back to the day view. Let's close everything else but this. Um, inside my day view, I'll get rid of that split. We're using a grid. And every other iteration through the grid... Right, so we're going hours per day, however many hours per day, times two, because we have two columns that we're creating. We have a span on the grid that is grid column one, and we have another one that is grid column two that is the actual grid column that contains our elements that we're painting. If we're going to say, well, we don't need to show the hours, minutes, we might be able to skip outputting this. The only thing that I worry about is... Well, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. So what I want to do is I'm going to put in a parameter here. And I'll make this a Boolean. And I will call this uh, show, show Times. By default, I'm going to set that to true. So it always shows the times. And I'm going to say if Show Times and that. So if we're going to show the times and that, um, then it'll output that information. Otherwise, we'll output these. Um, it'll always output these. Hmm, that could be a problem. Yeah, it is to keep people from using the preview as their main environment. Yes. Else if... Uh, one and uh, do, 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 where to go? Percent two does not equal zero. I percent two. Then we'll output this the grid column. No. Um. If it's show, if show times, then it will be the value uh, one. Otherwise, it'll be the value two. That might work. That might work. Let's see what happens. It'd be great if it worked. So we just kind of conjured that up and yes, it does the thing. Okay. Uh, look at this. Well, that didn't work. 
First off, I'm not even passing in the thing yet. And it, it's not formatting properly. Catch you later, CLW. That's the Corey Weathers. Um, so I'm not... I, I didn't do that right. I didn't do that right at all. Showtimes is true. So... No. We always want to do an else here. Um... If I do that, then I'm going to get three grid columns going across. Maybe. Well, I'll get two grid columns if showtimes is false. Um. I don't want to output anything when when I is even. Um, but I do want to output the grid column when I is odd. Yeah. So I just want to do if I uh, percent two equals one. Then do that. That, that. that should work. Should work. Unless it's outputting that grid column entry wrong. That could be. Right? The formatting coming out of Razor is not, just not, per, not appropriate. Let's see. Loading... Loading. Okay, availability. And... What'd you do? I don't know. I broke it. That's what I did. Day view. Oh, look at that. Everything is grid column one. Well, actually, it's not even outputting the second grid column. Isn't it outputting the second grid column? Right? It's just grid column one the whole way down. Oh. This, should be, it, this is backwards. It, it's backwards. How can it be wrong? Unit test passed. Now we're on something else that we didn't write a test against. This was backwards. So it was putting everything in the same column. What if you only have previews? Then... Visual Studio is a commercial product. You can get the community edition and you'll be able to use it completely free. If you need more than that, that's when... Right, you want the advanced features. And that's when Microsoft asks that you that you pay for the product. There's plenty of other products that are available that will help you write code. At some point, it's a commercial product and, and you do need to buy it. Yeah, let me get rid of that. Continue. There, now it's formatted properly again. And if I go back... Now on this view, I want to change it so that I pass it false for showtimes. Here. I should have done that with the multiple carrot, shouldn't I? Like that. Uh, need quotes around it all. Ah, darn it. That's better. Try that one more time. Game changer, yeah. Uh, Canadian Anarchist. 
Am I the best programmer in my neighborhood, city, country, planet? Um, probably in my neighborhood. In my city? There's some pretty good programmers in my city. And I don't know them all. Um, I don't pretend to be the best in, in my city, in my state, in my country. Um, I know a couple things. So now we shouldn't see any dates going across. We should. I only want to see it, though, in the first one. Yeah, look at that. But... Yeah, this is... So I need it in the first column. The second we're going to need to deal with here. And it stinks that I need to... Rebuild, because that won't rerun. Yeah. But I'm still going to run into that it's not the best programmer in your office. There you go. Donald Newth wins for planet. Have you met? Have you met some of the folks that I work with? So let's do this. I'm going to just touch this up right here. There we go. So that, see that? It's not even lined up quite right. Ugh. Ugh. Um, so we got a little bit of work to do here to get these lined up right. But it does still do the right thing over here. There it is. Okay. So I've got a little bit more work to do to make that line up. And it's even off by a little bit here. Right? So we've got this div weak view. This is inside of a span. This is inside of a span. But this one's bumped down a little bit. Right? Why is that bumped down? Let's look. It's got a top border of 1. It's interesting. Ultra Howl. Thanks so much for the follow. Is that PM under the first one? Yeah, it's intended after the seven. It's just not wide enough. This one is 148 by 299. See it there? That's interesting that it's not lining up. Oh my gosh. Uh, Korea Maurice. Thanks so much for the follow. Hey there. So they're not quite lining up. Right? And it's not the span at 153.01. That's the right size. But it's like there's something at the beginning here that's bumping it down. So we're trying to build a weak view grid. I have this grid that I can use that I've built that will allow me to show here's the day. And I've tried to take the time, say hide the time. So we just have the one column. But I think we've got some CSS here that's um, not handling the lack of a column properly. Yeah. So maybe I have a day view no times class that I put on it when there is when there are no times and it doesn't have this. So it only shows one column. Um you might be onto something there Raz Raziel Descartes. Um, I think you might be right. Let me see if I can... Cha let's change this. Right, let's put a little thing here that says... Uh, oops, that's not it. Um, right, if we're showing the times, then let's output nothing. Otherwise, let's output underscore uh, no time. No... Uh, yeah, no times. 
So maybe then I have just copy and paste. I know I could do some sort of inheritance stuff with this. I don't need that. I think that's it. Oh, and I got to put the uh, no times on this. And that might solve it for me. Yeah, that's right. All right, let's give that a shot. You might be right, and, and when we fix that display, it should take care of it. Uh, JC Comrade, thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Welcome to the chat room. What if all the columns were in the same grid? Well, then it's a completely different control at that point, right? Or maybe we tell it that it's this many columns wide. Sure, I'll see. Well, that did nothing. Oh no, actually, see that? That's the background color. It did do just the grid column one. It didn't put the cells on it. Oh no, those are the cells. Okay. But it didn't put the white on it. Um. Tell it how wide it is. That's another, that's definitely another way we can approach this. Sure. Sure. I think these ones aren't picking up it. Because that the columns are stored in CSS, even if I said your seven columns are cross, I'm going to have to generate this based on the output of that razor command. You're learning coding. You were surprised to see coding streamers. Check out the live coders team. There's a whole bunch of us. There's about 60 folks that we've curated and put together on this on this Twitch team that do all kinds of different coding things live here on Twitch. Check it out. So this one for span grid, I need to do the same thing. I need to do the same thing for all of these. Remove the background color. Well, then I won't have the cells appearing with the uh, with the border. I do want the gray, so I generate that border. What I think I want to do. Right? I mean, I can easily do this. Um, right, so I pick up both sets. want to join but I guess I need more learning on clean architect architecture um there's no embarrassing this is this is everybody learning together I know nothing about CSS flex grid and we're I'm learning how to use this at the same time as everybody else here well that just completely screwed things up didn't it So, what did I do? There it is. But it didn't pick up the... It 
Yeah, it didn't. Okay, so now I can I can work with this CSS. Uh, you know what? Get rid of that. There we go. Still got this weird bit here. Right, maybe if I make this like 075. Not 0 0.1. Still not quite big enough. It's and it's still not right, it's not lined up. Um, sure. Uh, that's CLW. Dub, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's Corey Hurricane Weathers. <laughs> um, all right. I need to figure out why that's not lining up, but the rest of these line up quite nice. That extra little bit of space there just... It's... Right, there's, there's no padding, no margin, anything inside of it. But for some reason, there's something here. Right, can we say like minus two? Nope, doesn't like that. Minus two PX, nope. See, it's, it's interesting, why isn't it? Yeah, it's not going to lift it there. Any elements before it in its div? It is behind me. I'm sorry. Uh, this up here a little bit. Yeah, it's just not landing properly there. I'm going to save this for next time, which will be Sunday. So let me save off what we've got here. Let's exit over here. And yeah, we added a unit test there. Fantastic. Let me, let's save off what we've got here. Let's wrap things up. Let's get ready to raid one of our friends here. So I'm going to commit these changes, um, fix some display issues. Corrected uh, expansion of the schedule. I feel good about that. There it goes. Push. Fantastic. Thanks so much for joining me. Mind pushing it to the friends repo? Sure. I will. I can push that upstream. Ah, uh, yeah, well, let me do it. Uh, I'm going to have to create a pull request and push it over there. I'll take care of that uh, offline here. Thanks so much. Got my little projects connected to MS Access and have combo box when I add data doesn't show. D tell you what, drop a line in the, in the group Discord and we can take a look at that. There's a group of folks, there's a nice community at that Discord link that I just shared. You can ask questions. Folks are always happy to help out if you have any kind of a problem. Let's set up for a raid so we can send folks over to another channel where other where some of our friends are writing writing code and having a good time. If you're um, a subscriber, grab the first line of text. If you're not, that's okay. Grab the second line of text that the bot just shared there. And I think today. You know what? I was talking about our friend Code Rush. Let's raid him today. We're going to raid... This is Mark Miller. Mark's been working on a really cool app that uses a lot of JavaScript, a lot of CSS, and has 3D models for rolling dice live in the browser window. It's really cool stuff. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me, and I hope to see you tomorrow for my ASP.NET Core workshop. I hope you tune in. We're going to be here all day starting at 10 a.m. Tell your friends, tell your colleagues, tell your family, tell your pets. Sign up for Twitch. Join us. It's going to be a great time. 
thank you again, everybody, for joining us. And uh, get ready to say hi to Mark for me. And I will see you tomorrow for our ASP.NET Core workshop. Hands on. We're going to have a great time. Catch you later. <laughs>